guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to probably the coolest video I have ever filmed. So next to me here, you may have seen it on the news, is the incredible pliosaur skull that was found along the Jurassic coast in England. Now this skull has quite the story of how it was found. So someone known as Philip Jacobs actually found the top of the snout here on the beach. So at first he thought, is that a bit of fossilized wood? You know, what is that? Because the last thing a fossil hunter expects to find is a piece of jaw, let alone a piece of a pliosaur jaw, because these fossils are so rare. And that's exactly what he found. And even this end bit of this snout weighs a ton. He couldn't believe it. So he did the right thing. He got it out of the waterline and he buried it in the kind of upper part of the beach. And he marked where it was and he then got in contact with Dr. Steve Etches, who runs this beautiful Etches collection here in Kimmeridge. Steve Etches is an expert when it comes to all things Jurassic fossils. And so he very quickly was incredibly excited, but the first step was to get the snout out from the burial site. So they assembled a team, they got the snout retrieved, and then started the huge process of working out, well, if that snout came out the cliffs, where's the rest of the skull? Or where's the rest of this pliosaur? So it then became really exciting, but the hard work truly started at that point. So they then got Ash Hall, who worked with the Etches Collection, to drone the cliff face so that they were actually able to study detailed photographs and work out where did this snout fall out of the cliff. So it took two days of painstaking, kind of methodical work to identify what they thought was the location of the rest of the skull. And lucky for them, after they got a climbing team in to double check, it was the locality. However, like I said, that it didn't get any easier after that. If anything, it got a lot harder. So this skull is two meters long. It is humongous. So just this little snout bit, which was probably about that long that broke off, wasn't movable by a strong grown man. And fossil hunters, they, they kind of have this like inner you know, strength when they really want to fossil. They really want to fossil, so they get this adrenaline rush and they can carry a lot of weight. So it's not to be movable, it weighs a ton. So you can imagine what this whole specimen weighs. And so to actually get this out of a cliff where this was located 10 meters up the cliff and two miles from the nearest access point, you can imagine the process that had to happen. So this was actually found in April 2022. So we're now about a year and a half later than that. So over that time, they have been excavating, prepping, and restoring the specimen. It has taken a whole village of people to put together. The documentary that you saw shows it very nicely, Attenborough and the giant sea monster. And if you haven't, that's a really great thing to watch to learn a little bit more about what happened with the specimen and the process that was involved to get it here today. Once the skull was identified in the cliff, the work then began to excavate it, which took months and months and a lot of teamwork with rope experts as well to safely extract this fossil. But it's 10 meters up a cliff and it's two miles from the nearest access point. So how on earth do you get a fossil like this from the cliff somewhere safe? Well, that's where there was lots of people who got involved and a custom sled was built by Rod Bernica. Now, I haven't seen the sled, but it sounds like it was quite an interesting design. And if you want to see the blueprints of it and some footage of it, you can actually see it here at the Etches Collection. They'll be playing a behind the scenes video. So once it was removed from the cliff, it was then stored in a barn for several months until it could be safely moved to the museum. Dr. Steve Etches did the prep on this specimen, which removed all the excess rock matrix from around the fossil. However, after the preparation, the restoration then begins. Now, the restoration process was done by a father and son team, Chris and Alex Moore. But before they did that, they photographed the entire specimen, they laser scanned it, and they even did a CT scan of the snout. Now, this was to ensure that none of the restoration done on it would impede in any further scientific research. Once this was done, Chris and Alex could restore certain parts of this fossil that unfortunately didn't survive. But the restoration involved the teeth. So the University of Southampton 3D scanned and then printed the teeth you see here. So this specimen did have its roots, so they were able to accurately scale them. And then Chris and Alex meticulously put them in place and you would never know that any of these teeth were missing. So this fossil has gone through some very excellent top-notch dentistry. The other interesting thing with this specimen is it's got two very large eyes. However, it also has a parietal eye, which is almost like a third eye. 
Now, this wouldn't have necessarily been for sight, but it would have been for sensory apparatus of some sort. So this really was a top predator of its time, and it would have been the top of its respective food chain. Another aspect that was restored in the specimen was actually the neural arches. So these are located at the vertebral column. So what happened was there was a few that were in good enough condition that they could take casts and then replicate them along the others. And they have been perfectly reconstructed. So you may be wondering how pliosaurs relate to plesiosaurs, as they sound quite similar and it's easy to confuse marine reptiles. But pliosaurs actually diverged from their plesiosaur relatives during the early Jurassic. And what that means is they both kept the same general body shape, but the heads of pliosaurs got larger and larger, whilst the nest, as time went on, got a lot shorter. And that left us with something that looked like this. Now, pliosaur fossils are very rare to come by, especially during the Jurassic period. So to have one of this sort of quality and size and just it's so complete, the skull, is going to be really important to scientific research. A lot of answers can be made from this specimen. You know, we can learn a lot more about they lived, hunted and even died. And studies are just being done on the fossil itself. So interestingly, when this fossil died, it would have become prey or food for other creatures and they actually found shark teeth within the rock matrix around the fossil, and other scientific studies are being done at a microscopic level on the rock matrix that was found around the fossil, as this would give an insight on what the smaller creatures were up to during this time period. So here you can actually see the side view of this specimen, and it is shivunga, beauty of the size reference, but this is just under two meters long worth of pliosaur skull. And now that might sound like it's the largest pliosaur that's ever been found, but in fact, Coming in at two metres, it would have been about a nine metre long pliosaur, whereas evidence shows that these ferocious beasts could have got up to 15 metres long. But due to the lack of fossil remains, we only find parts of these creatures and the other parts aren't present. So we kind of have to piece together that if we've got this bone, roughly the creature would have been this big. It's very rare that we get such a complete specimen. So this here is going to be incredible for scientific research. So even though these fossils are rare and we don't actually know a lot about pliosaurs, it's safe to say that these were apex predators of their time. So that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed seeing a little insight of this incredible pliosaur discovery. And if you get the chance, you must come to the Etches collection down in Kimmeridge to actually see it because photos don't show the size of this beast. I mean, it is really something spectacular to look at. And the preservation, the preparation, the restoration of this piece is really something to marvel at and you can learn so much about how they got it here i mean even the display case should be noted because this in here weighs a ton but i really hope you enjoyed today's video and then please like and subscribe if you did i'll be back with more soon comment below any questions and i'll be happy to answer them but thank you again for watching and hopefully i'll see you next time